everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for February 20th, and today's topic is Part 2 of Tales of Two Goats, and if you missed the first part, you're welcome to go back and uh, check it out from yesterday, and so uh, that will be today's uh, topic is Part 2 of A Tale of Two Goats, amen, and before I get started, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior if you'll just humble yourself, admit you're a sinner, and you can't do it your own way, and it's only through what Jesus Christ did on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that he died for our sins, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to scripture, and going on down through those verses, amen, and so Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, no man Coming to the Father, but by Him. All right, so we're going to start with today's scripture song, and we're going to be singing uh, John four twenty four today. So if you have a Bible or one of these uh, scripture song books, you're welcome to turn along and sing along with Brother Dean, Sister Patty, and myself as I press play on the CD here. Amen. <clears throat> John four twenty four. God, God is a spirit, spirit, and they, they that worship, worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. That's right. Both spirit and in truth. All right. So, I'll go back there and do that again towards the end of the broadcast. Amen. And now it's time to get into part two of A Tale of Two Goats, part two. And so, just to give you a review from yesterday, not to go into the whole thing, but uh, the author yesterday was, uh, and today is, let's see, it was R.K., that was the initials for, uh, let's see, R.K., go down here, that was uh, Randy Cruz, uh, pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Stanwood, I.A., and so, yesterday he uh, was talking about how he had these two goats, and they lived on this farm with him, and uh, so he was uh, talking about uh, these two goats yesterday, and their names were Jenny and Jennifer, and so you can go back and listen to that, and get caught up with that from yesterday, and so uh, continue today on what he writes on part two of this topic. He says, or first let's read the uh, passage here up on top here, it says Genesis 23, 2. And Sarah died in Kirjath Arba, the same is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Genesis 23, 2. And so, let's read what he wrote here. He says, I write this with a heavy heart, for Jenny is gone. That was one of his goats. Uh, unlike Jennifer, we really hated to see Jenny go. He says, she was like all our other goats, and often needed help in time of trouble, as uh, do do us all. And we know this is just an animal, but uh, we all need help, and that's why we need to stick together. Amen. Uh, continue on, he says, One Sunday night, we came home from church and went to close the goats in the barn. We heard the cries of a goat in distress, a quick change of clothes, and out to the barnyard. But where was Jenny? We finally found her, kind of. Uh, we had big rolls of fence uh, stored in the barnyard, he says. Jenny had jumped up on one of the rolls to eat the grass growing uh, through the center and out the top. There it was, a roll of fence with goat legs sticking out the top. Humorous? Not to Jenny, <laughs> Uh, might have been humorous to us, but not to Jenny, not to the goat. Uh, it took a while to free her, carry her to the barn, and give her some special attention. She was fine. It 
can be marriages, family relationships, health, uh, but people get themselves into tangled up situations that without help, there is no hope. The goat incident was years ago, and Jenny must have never forgot all we did for her that night. Uh, she became one of the best goats we ever had. Always friendly, loved attention, calm and trusting. Uh, don't be like Jennifer, who turned against the one who helped her so much. Be like Jenny. She's gone and really missed, and there's sadness on the farm. So, let's be grateful when somebody helps us out of a situation when we're in a time of trouble or sorrow or get ourselves in a, a sticky situation that we uh, uh, need to get out of. So, and let's try not to go there in the first place. And, of course, we know the Lord will always help us out of those times of trials and tribulations. Amen. So, praise the Lord. And that uh, is the end of uh, part two of A Tale of Two Goats. Interesting how he used... Two animals to describe human beings. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that is the end of that topic. And now let's go ahead and uh, read another chapter from the Golden Calf Affair in the Victorious Christian Living book. And we're on chapter 8. So if you have a copy of this book, the first edition, it will be on page 201 in the book. If you have a newer copy, it might be on a different page. So, The Golden Calf Affair, Part 8, or Chapter 8, I should say. And Brother James writes here, as we can uh, go on here, it says, uh, Last time we read together how Moses stood between God and the people, holding back the judgment that would have befallen them by means of his intercess intercessory prayer. In one of those odd biblical renderings, only now we do we read of the prayer Moses prayed uh, after already seeing its result. All right, Exodus 32, 11-14 reads, And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he? He bring them out to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and sayest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken uh, spoken of, well, I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it for ever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Amen. Uh, there are two questions, two arguments, one demand, one appeal, and one bold reminder in this intercession. The first question indicates that Moses had no idea what was happening in the plain below. For he asks God why he is angry. This is most encouraging, for it tells us the intercessor does not have to have all knowledge. Romans eight twenty six to twenty seven is the reference. Uh, so it doesn't have to have all knowledge uh, in order to be heard. Uh, the one praying is ignorant concerning the deeds of men, but correct in his understanding of the Lord in his ways. Uh, that is enough. What the lend, uh, leader of Israel asked the God of Israel shows the former did not know why the latter was filled with wrath, but he does know that if the power and might which brought down uh, Egypt uh, were to be directed against the Hebrews, they would be destroyed. Yeah, that's uh, the truth. The second question is des uh, designed to compel the Lord to consider carefully what he is about to do. This is boldness indeed, uh, though it is in no way disrespectful. He is not justifying uh, whatever it is the Israelites may have done, nor is he condemning God for uh, whatever action he might take, but he is reminding Jehovah that the honor of his name is at stake. And he says here, Brother James uh, says here, I am not suggesting that the Lord was out of line or that smiting the Hebrews would have been an error, 
but it is evident for the text that Moses reminds God that he may take a second course of action, which will also glorify his great name. Uh, what is plainly given us to understand is that the prayers that have influence in the halls of heaven are those offered which have uh, which have as their sole motive the honor and glory of the most uh, uh, of the most high uh, when we ask for uh, selfish ends or we ask amiss james four one through four we should not expect to be rewarded when our petition is offered so that the name of the Lord may be honored and revered or uh, uh, reverenced uh, that the lord uh, the name of the Lord may be honored and reverenced uh, we may expect an answer. Uh, turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. We gasp. The man seems to be giving God an order. Is Moses suggesting that he is right and God is wrong? It would seem so from the wording. First, we must understand some definitions. Wrath is violent anger, i.e. anger in action. Fierce is something vehement, savage, ravenous, and outrageous. Uh, thus, we learn that the idolatry on the part of God's people had driven him to an anger which roars like a lion or howls like a rushing wind, furiously desiring to spring forth upon those who have provoked him to jealousy. Evil is not sin, but the consequence or outworking of sin. So evil is not sin, but the out or the consequent or the consequence or outworking of sin. Uh, therefore, what we have here is the Lord being driven to an outpouring of his fury. He is ready to give the people what they deserve for their wicked crimes against him. Repentance is not a feeling or an emotion, nor is it necessarily an admission of guilt. To repent is to change one's thought or course of action. What we have in the verses under consideration is a man who has spent weeks in the presence of God, it would have taken but a few hours to dictate the law and have Moses write it down. It would have taken only moments had God simply delivered it to him on the tables of stone. The lengthy stays on the mountain must have been times of fellowship and communion. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. Exodus 33:11. This man, who is a friend of God, now urges the Lord to change his mind about destroying Israel. He makes an appeal, not to any righteousness on the part of the Hebrews, but to the long-standing covenant God made with their fathers and the reproach that the uh, heathen would bring upon his name if he destroyed the people to whom his good name was uh, tied. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel... Moses says to take uh, Moses says to take God's mind off the present circumstance. Remember thy servants. Moses says to try to get God to recall the time when he loved the family. Remember to whom uh, thou swearest by thine own self, and sayest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever. What we come to see is that this prayer is not a presumptuous uh, man giving orders to God. Rather, it is a man filled with faith, appealing to the honor of God's name and the integrity of his words. Moses is not telling God what to do. He is reminding him of what he did. The prophet is not asking the Lord to act contrary to his character, but he is using this char or that character as the grounds for his appeal. This is the position which should be taken by any who may intercede. We do not plead for others on the basis of their righteousness, for if they had had any, they would not need such prayer. Uh, we go before the Lord on the ground of his holiness. We do not ask him to act contrary to his word in order uh, that our lusts uh, may be satisfied, but we plead with him to move in accord with the promises he has made. Uh, the words of Moses change the entire perspective. God has had said, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, 
and all this land that I have spoken of will I give it unto your seed. Verse 13. Uh, there is no hope in Israel's actions, past, present, or future. They were nothing until Jehovah made a covenant with Abraham, and they will never be anything more than what God makes them. In the moment when the Lord is tempted to destroy them because of their vanity, Moses reminds him that they have never been anything more than dust and folly. When we pray for one another, we cannot enter the presence of a pure and righteous God who is absolutely holy and boast of anything we have done or offer up any works that might incline his heart to help. The only hope any of us have is in the promises made to us by a God who cannot lie. Amen. If he has promised salvation through the blood of Jesus, we stand there. If he has promised the Holy Spirit will abide with us forever, we stand there. If he has promised to make all things work together for good, we stand there. A mortal man says to an eternal God, You said they shall inherit it forever. Our only hope is in the word of the one who changes not. Our forever depends entirely on him. When we pray for others, may this be the basis of our petitions. When we come near the despair of over another failure or problem in our lives, let us keep this fixed in our hearts. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Amazing. Incredible. Amen. Uh, how oft has someone prayed for us and stayed the chastening uh, hand of, the, of God? How many times have our prayers availed to bring a little more mercy to some stumbled soul? Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5.17 So let's keep praying without ceasing. Amen. And come uh, boldly to the throne of grace and ask in the right way. Uh, amen. And remind the Lord of his promises. Not really demanding things, so that's what it's talking about here. Amen. All right, well, that's the end of chapter 8. And Lord willing, tomorrow we'll cover chapter 9 from the Golden Calf Affair and the Victorious Christian Living Book by Brother James Knox. Amen. And so now let's go ahead and let's see here. We'll go back to the 19th and sing yesterday's scripture song and then Conclude with today's. Amen. Jeremiah 51, 10. <clears throat> the Lord, Lord hath brought, brought forth, forth our righteousness. Come, Come and let, let us declare in Zion, Zion the work, work of the Lord, Lord our God. God. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare. Come and let us declare. Of the Lord our God. Amen. All right, now today is one more time. <clears throat> John 4 24. God, God is, is a spirit, spirit, and, and they, they that, that worship, worship him must worship, worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they Worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. All right. Well, that about. Conclude it for today's broadcast, but before I go, as always, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and topic for tomorrow's uh, devotional, and tomorrow will be the 21st, and we'll be singing Proverbs 11.30. It says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, 
and he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. So that's Proverbs 11.30. Tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic is titled, A Dreaded Enemy Becomes a Dear Friend. And the passage is from 1 Corinthians 15.55. So that will be tomorrow's uh, devotional topic from the Baptist Bread devotional booklet. And then, of course, we'll cover chapter 9 from the Golden Calf Affair in the Victorious Christian Living book. And I know it's backwards on the screen, but that's what the cover looks like, Victorious Christian Living by James W. Knox. And that's available on the church website at www.jameswknox.org. And, of course, if you'd like to learn more of these scripture songs, they're available to download, or you can order the CDs at Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website uh, for their mission work. It's uh, www.dailyscripturesongs.com. Amen. And, of course, um, uh, this address here for the Baptist Bread devotional books are www.timgreenministries.org, and they come in a box of 12, and they're twelve ninety five. dollars uh, for, for these, and they come to you every other month, so you'll probably get the ones for March and April if you order them, amen, and you can hand them out to your friends or family or uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, amen. All right, well, until tomorrow, may the Lord richly bless you, and hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your Saturday, amen. Uh, so praise the Lord, and remember, Jesus saves, believe on him. Bye-bye for now, and thanks again for watching.